Welcome to Citroen Cooperman's Corner Chats. I'm Peter Katz of West Fair Communications, publisher of the Westchester County Business Journal, Fairfield County Business Journal, WAG Magazine, westfaironline.com, and electronic newsletters to keep you fully informed. And today we're chatting with Ron Heck, a tax partner at Citroen Cooperman with more than 40 years of experience in accounting and taxation. His clients have included corporations, partnerships, entrepreneurs, and his focus is on tax planning and tax compliance. Ron, welcome. Thank you, Peter. Glad to be here today. And Ron, uh, your experience uh, is in great depth. Uh, in the matter of taxation, and we finally made it through another tax season. How did this go, uh, bo both for you and for your clients? From our perspective first, this has to have been, for a number of reasons, the worst tax season um, in the closing in on 50 years that I've been doing this. Um, and clients felt the same kind of pressure with changes and compression and issues with dealing with the Internal Revenue Service. It was while a return to normalcy with April 15th for the first time in several years, it was the perfect storm of problems. When you say perfect storm, what is it the what are some of the factors that came together uh, to, to make this uh, such a dramatic tax season? Um, several things. There were certainly many tax changes in the past 18 months. There was a CARES Act at the beginning of the pandemic, another tax act at the end of 2020, the American Rescue Plan at the beginning of 20, 2021, uh, the Internal Revenue Service, which is a story unto itself, has been pushed into enforcing and administering social policy that's come out of the pandemic, as well as trying to enforce tax law when they are dealing with what everybody else is dealing with in the great resignation. You know, you mentioned the IRS. There have been a lot of stories recently about the IRS not having enough employees uh, in, in this particular time frame, uh, having backups uh, of, of unopened mail and things of that nature. What do you hear about that? Um, well, what I'm hearing is that it's the absolute truth uh, when issues that they are having end up having to come before congressional hearings, we know that there's fire behind the smoke. Uh, the latest statistics I saw, and I've got some examples that show what these problems bring, um, is there are 23 million unprocessed income tax returns, some of them going back to 2019, and there are 6 million pieces of either unopened or unanswered correspondence. As of three days ago, the Internal Revenue Service Commissioner said to Congress that they feel they will be back where they need to be by the end of this year. But it's a problem that flows not only to us, but to our clients. And two perfect examples um, is I have a client that for reasons um, was required to file an income tax return in 2019 on paper rather than filing electronically. That 2019 income tax return had an overpayment that was requested to be applied as an estimated payment to 2020. 2020 comes along, we file that tax return claiming the overpayment from 2019, and that issue rolls to 2021, and the client begins to get notices. You haven't filed your 2019 return, you filed your 2020 return. You owe money. If we don't hear from you, we're going to file liens. It took literally until two weeks ago to get a hold of somebody in a group called the Taxpayer Resolution Group that 
was able to get these returns filed. But in the interim, the client was stuck with, you know, several thousand dollars of additional time by us to try to solve a problem that was the result of the Internal Revenue Service not being able to have enough people in the right place at the right time. Now, that, of course, is an aberration. Uh, at a large firm such as Citroen Cooperman, you do have uh, all of the latest uh, bells and whistles in terms of technology. What does that do uh, to make it uh, possible for you to service your clients in a timely and efficient manner? Um, the, I guess it's a good news, bad news situation. But in an organization like ours, where we've got the most modern of communications and IT structure and artificial intelligence to help us with tax preparation, we can turn returns around in a quicker manner than we used to be able to in the good old days. Um, get things to clients to look at electronically and then transmit to the Internal Revenue Service electronically, which is what we do with in excess of probably 95% of the tax returns that we file. And in many cases, that eliminates some of the human interaction with the Internal Revenue Service Although we have begun with the 2021 filing season that is now three weeks in our rearview mirror to see notices to numerous clients that says we have your tax return, which we know they did because we had uh, have an electronic receipt for it and the balance due was paid electronically. The client says I the money that was supposed to come out of my bank account came out of my bank account. I now have a notice from the IRS that says I owe money. And buried in that notice is a one sentence caveat that says this notice does not include any transactions that took place in the last 21 days. So things are better electronically. We're not there yet, though. But they're they're still behind. Uh, in other Absolutely. words, there, there's a, there there is a, a gap which perhaps didn't exist a decade or, or two decades ago. Ab Absolutely, it did not. Now, one thing that also didn't exist are, are tax changes. And what has come into effect that has affected clients recently? And what do you anticipate may happen uh, this year? Okay, a little bit look back and then we'll talk about where we may be. Um, I alluded a few minutes ago to several changes in the tax law. And as any advisor will tell you, whether it's a CPA or it's an investment advisor, whether we like the tax law that we have or not, we like certainty. Uncertainty is very unsettling to the markets, unsettling to businesses to be able to plan. But some of the things that happened in the last couple of years, um, and a lot of it driven by um, congressional desire to help relieve issue, economic issues associated with the pandemic, were change after change after change, one of the issues that clients are facing is a piece of tax law um, that was that's called the employee retention credit that allows employers that either had reductions of revenue because of the pandemic or mandated government shutdowns to get tax credits up to possibly $26,000 per employee for having kept employees on payroll. Now, on paper, it sounds like a phenomenal um, piece of legislation. The devil is always in the details. And one of the details is the law says, if you're going to claim this credit, you can't claim a deduction for the wages that you paid that give rise to the credit. So we're facing situations with delayed processing of these claims 
that taxpayers did not get deductions in either 2020 or 2021 for wage payments because they've claimed credits, but they haven't gotten the money yet. And the law says, despite the fact that you haven't gotten the money yet, you need to give up a deduction. So for the moment, many clients to the tune of potentially millions of dollars are paying taxes without having gotten the pandemic-related relief that Congress provided. As an accountant for a company facing a mess such as that is, and I think mess is really the only (laughs) word that that fits, uh, what can you do uh, in in the way of planning uh, to help ease some of the the burden and stress that results? Um, The best piece that we can do with this, because there's not a lot of wiggle room when legislation has issues in it, is... In informing clients up front that the good news is there's this money, the bad news is we need to plan for cash flow, uh, we need to plan your taxable income uh, as the end of the year approaches to try to accelerate some deductions to maybe claim some things legitimately that may be this year deductions or next year deductions and alleviate some of that pressure of having to wait um, for dollars to come in. But there are a number of things, and everybody has talked about um, the pass-through entity tax relief that state governments have provided to give business owners a workaround from the 2017 federal tax changes that limited state tax deduction benefits to $10,000. The IRS blessed these processes back in early 2020 and left numerous questions unanswered. Um, Many states didn't uh, provide uh, methodology until late last year for paying these taxes. So again, this was the perfect storm of good ideas that create problems in the execution. As you and your team at Cipron Cooperman go into a client uh, or even to take on a new client uh, for the first time, right. what do you do? What is your process that enables you to pick out the real traps that a client may face? Um, The the first thing we have always done is when we get a new client, uh, we spend the time to sit with them, get to know them, look at their financial statements, look at their tax returns, ask them what their short-term and long-term plans are, Are they planning an expansion? Do we need to work with them to get their financial statements in order so that borrowing money would be easier? Do we need to have conversations uh, with people that are looking to prepare for the next generation to take over a business? And then the conversation gets into the nitty gritty of, okay, this is where you are, but let's have a conversation about what is cooking in Washington that might have an impact over the next year should any of the things that are being proposed come to fruition. One thing that has been cooking in Washington and in fact has come to fruition is the Federal Reserve raising interest rates by a half point, which uh, sent some shockwaves through Wall Street because of of the size. Uh, They had been talking about quarter point increase, but ended up uh, doing a a full half point. Uh, What does that mean for your typical client? Uh, Is is it as simple as as just uh, facing a higher cost of borrowing? It's bigger than that, and it's bigger than that in the entire economy. It's a higher cost of borrowing, which translates into higher costs of buying materials or higher costs of wages 
um, and it's creating additional inflationary pressure. Um, and you, everybody has seen statistics lately that as much as the raises for employees this year were higher than they have been in several years, inflation this year has all but, not all but, has eaten up any of those benefits. And it becomes a, a necessary evil to deal with how are we going to continue to run our business so that our employees can be paid, so that our product um, or our service, in our case, can continue to be provided at the same high level that it always has been. And, and again, we get into the uncertainty because there are a lot of things that if they come to fruition are going to change dramatically um, the tax field on which we are playing. Now, Ron, in your career, you've been fairly active with uh, associations of accountants, for instance, in the American Institute of uh, Certified Public Accountants. You've been on various uh, tax committees, uh, same for the New York State Society of uh, Public Accounts. But uh, what do you hear in your activities from colleagues, uh, uh, other accountants that, that you work with? Is there a meeting on the mi of the minds when it comes to analysis of uh, the difficulties uh, in doing the tax returns these days versus what you were facing, say, a decade ago? It's a universal answer, whether it's the sole practitioner or it's uh, the, the medium-sized national firms like Citroen Cooperman or the larger and largest of the firms. We're all facing the same issues, um, uncertainty, inability to get enough staff, inability to keep staff, and difficulty in keeping up with what are today's laws and how do we start planning for year-end planning this year when we don't know what we're going to, where we're going to be come New Year's Eve. If I were one of your clients and I were having some uncertainties regarding taxes uh, in my business, how do you think that would translate into uncertainties on my personal returns? Same issues is where are we going to be? And we're living in uncertain times. You know, the old, the old adage or old, curse of may you live in interesting times um, is here for us. And what we do is we'll sit with clients and I've been doing this for several months and continue to do so, talking about things like, okay, corporate tax rate could go from 21 to 28% next year. Individual tax rates could go from 37% to 39.6% next year. And the bigger picture things, like if you're thinking about a transaction where you may want to sell some or all of your business, one of the proposals for next year um, is that if an individual has taxable income in excess of a million dollars, the proposal would tax their long-term capital gains which are taxed today at 20% at the maximum ordinary income tax rate of 39.6%. Now that would tell me if a client is thinking about it's time to get out or bring in the next generation or figure out how to get out of the way and let my children run the business, maybe you accelerate those kind of conversations because a 20% tax rate on the sale of a business versus a 39.6% tax rate on the sale of my business is something that requires thought now, not after Thanksgiving. It sounds as if when you talk about planning, you're not just talking about planning, planning, but you're talking about planning for various forks in the road that may appear. Exactly. Um, and I actually this afternoon have a call, this exact call with a client 
of you may not be ready, absolutely ready to sell, but maybe start the ball rolling because it's a process to interview and hire investment bankers. And it's a process to get the right corporate counsel in place. And if the numbers that are coming back to you are not what you like, then you pull the plug and you don't sell. But we're trying to get the clients and whether it's that or whether it's estate planning, which could be turned on its head come next year as well. Um, it's better to have done some thought and some work and decide this isn't the time yet, but it may be in the near future. Perhaps an unfair personal question, but what is it that gives you the greatest satisfaction about what you're able to do for clients? Helping them solve problems, whether it's a problem of how to properly structure a deal, whether it's a problem in selling something, um, whether it's they're concerned, are they paying too much in taxes? Are they concerned that their estate plan is not in order? Um, sitting with a client and having them say, thank you very much is what pushes me after all these years to still want to get out of bed in the morning and do what I do. This is a difficult world. We have war going on. We have a pandemic going on. We have economic ups and downs going on. We have upheavals in various industries. Where do you think, based on your experience and your observations, we are going in terms of Taxes, economy, business stability. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll answer them in reverse order. Business stability and what I'm about to say might sound harsh, but in a time of war, um, and I have been around for some of them, um, there are businesses that thrive, um, businesses in the entire supply chain that's involved with electronics and machinery and, you know, wartime necessities that run from um, medical supplies up to and including, you know, guns and artillery, those businesses are going to thrive. Um, the uncertainty comes with the uncertainty of where are we going to be economically? Um, and ultimately, where do I think we're going to be in taxes? If I could get my crystal ball to tell me what the midterm elections are going to look like, we could either have many of these tax plans that I mentioned might come to fruition, or we could be in a situation with Congress and the White House being controlled by different parties. And for two years, absolutely nothing will change in the tax arena. So it's, it's a non-answer, but it's, we don't know. But it's planning through uncertainty that makes what we do challenging and interesting. As a professional, what advice do you give to those who would try to handle taxes on their own? Don't. <laughs> <laughs> and that's got nothing to do with, you know, Ron Heck, the businessman. It's Ron Heck the advisor. The tax law gets more and more complicated um, for the simple tax return, for the individual that has a W-2 and owns a home and has a few dollars in a bank or a brokerage house. Um, that's a different conversation. But for the business person, it's penny wise and pound foolish because there are just too many things that if you're not dealing with them day in and day out, 
um, you may miss uh, forget doing things intentionally wrong. You may miss things because of the constant changes in complexity. One thing that, that I missed was setting out the types of businesses that you deal with. Could you give us just a quick rundown on some of those? And you don't have to name clients specifically, but general categories at least. Uh, um, it's across the board. I deal with large medical practices uh real estate ventures law firms um uh, manufacturer and distribution companies um i, I said healthcare uh employment agencies it's it's across the it's across the board the areas that i like to and 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 do deal with and finally, if you could stand up on a, a rooftop and shout a message to, to, to taxpayers, both business and personal, what would you tell them? Um, don't lose faith in the system. As tough as the system is, it's one of the best in the world. And plan properly to be able to comfortably sleep at night and know you did your best and paid legally the least that you have to. And Ron Hecht, on that note, we say thank you for joining us on this session of Citroen Cooperman's Corner Chats. I'm Peter Katz of Westfair Communications. Thanks and take care. And you too, Peter. Thank you. <laughs>